Right now, though, it is T minus two minutes till a launch there uh, for SpaceX. I want to put up this shot here on live now from Fox as a twice postponed launch will attempt to take off from Cape Canaveral on Monday. The RRT-1 mission set the launch aboard a Falcon 9 rocket on Friday, but was postponed because of high winds. Let's take you in and listen in to this rocket that's expected to go smoke and fire here in just over 120 seconds. We will light the Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. Stage two locks, so just complete. And we just heard a good call out there. The payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. So at T minus one minute and 45 seconds to lift off, let's listen in as we hear the series of callouts that lead up to launch. We're on guys, close outs. That white cloud from venting the TE LOX line is completely normal. Falcon 9 is in startup. Good callouts and indicating that Falcon 9 is now operating on its internal flight computers. Go for launch. So at T minus 42 seconds, all systems are go for the launch of today's mission. Let's sit back and watch. T minus 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Engine full power and lift off. Go SpaceX. Go Falcon. Go RRT one. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. During ascent, we tilt or gimbal the engines, and that turns the rocket horizontally in a maneuver known as a gravity turn. We're still going up, but now we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. Moments ago, we throttled Power the... and telemetry nominal. Good call out there. Moments ago, we throttled the engines down on the first stage in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Falcon is supersonic. Falcon 9 is now supersonic. Max Q is a critical moment during flight because the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Max Q. And we are now at Max Q, and the rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. You can track our progress to orbit by keeping an eye on the stage one telemetry in the bo in the bottom corner of your screen. And back chill started. Now we have several events coming up in quick succession. Main engine cutoff or MECO, stage separation, second engine start one or SES one, and fairing separation. Main engine cutoff or MECO is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Followed by this, the MVAC engine on the, second, on the second stage will light, which is called out as second engine start one or SES one. This engine burn lasting several minutes will propel the second stage and the payload to orbit. 
And in addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will separate shortly after SES1. So keep an eye out for all of those events coming up in just a few seconds. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Impact ignition. And there you heard and maybe just even saw those events that happened back to back, which again were Miko, Stage SEP, and SES-1. And just as a reminder, we will not have any Stage 2 views today following stage separation, and the remainder of our webcast will follow Fal the Falcon booster returning to Earth. Next up will be fairing separation, about 10 seconds. Fairing separation confirmed. Good call out there for confirmation of fairing separation. And as I mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today using our recovery vessel Doug once they fall back to Earth. It's about T plus four minutes and three seconds into today's mission. At the T plus six minute and 12 second mark, we expect to have some great views of the first stage entry burn. And for the entry burn, we relight three of the M1D engines on the first stage, starting with the center E9 engine, followed shortly after by the E1 and E5 engines. This helps slow down the vehicle as it passes back into Earth's denser, lower atmosphere. We need to slow it down to reduce re-entry forces, which ultimately helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. And this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, or its plume, and this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface, which is why our vehicles look the way they do. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. All right, you can hear this, the broadcast is a little intermittent as they kind of uh, figure things out, but a successful launch there of Falcon 9 rocket for this RRT-1 mission. It was twice postponed, most recently on Friday due to high winds. On Let's just continue thought, to listen in as this. of entry burn, but hopefully we do. They continue to dive into some of these control room the cost of space uh, conversations. Which enables more investment in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission is flying for its fourth time. And while this booster is on its fourth trip to and from space, we're working towards qualifying our fleet of Falcon boosters and fairings to support 40 missions each. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS has saved. And there you can see the entry bird. I'm glad we had a great view. <laughs> Stage one entry burn shut down. Good call out there for the end of entry burn. As And as you can see on your screen, the telemetry on the bottom left-hand corner indicates that the first stage is slowing down. Next up, in about a minute, we will have the landing burn. 
The Merlin engines on the Falcon first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and entry. And while it won't be visible on this webcast, the single MBAC engine on the second stage has a much wider nozzle and is optimized to operate in space, producing 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Stage two. Transonic. Stage two is internal guidance. Good call outs there for stage two. So coming up in under 30 seconds, we will have the landing burn of the first stage. And the landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster that is used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle in order to allow for a soft... Stage 2 FTS is saved. In order to allow for a soft stage touchdown on the drone ship. Hey, shut down. Stage one, landing light deploy. Great view of our drone ship, a short I'm park open insertion. And there you saw and heard Stage the one, landing confirmed. And saw the successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. This mission marks SpaceX's 126 successful Falcon launch of 2024, and the booster's landing marks SpaceX's 383rd recovery of an orbital class rocket. As a reminder, this was the fourth launch and landing for this first stage. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we'll be ending today's live coverage before payload deployment. So with a successful booster landing, that wraps up our coverage for this mission. All of us here at SpaceX would like to thank our customer for entrusting us with today's mission. And we also want to thank the Eastern Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's launch. And thank all of you for your support and for tuning into today's mission. Remember to follow at SpaceX on X for launch updates, and we'll see you here again very soon. All right, you're just listening in there to the SpaceX broadcast as they go off the air, but it was a successful launch and a successful landing. And I want to put this up again because it's so very fascinating. And this is not necessarily the one with the chopsticks where they catch the rocket. This was instead there uh, on a ship there in the ocean. But I want to put this up one more time here on Live Now from Foxes. This was the moment as it came back down to Earth. You can see some of these uh, boosters there uh, easing it back down to Earth as well as this uh, RRT-1 mission. Uh, it was pushed back several times due to the weather, due to high winds, uh, but it targeted today, and it was just impressive. You can see the site on the right, the ship there, uh, where it landed on the left, the rocket landing. So very impressive to see it touch down there safely, back uh, on ground on Earth over the Atlantic, but what an impressive feat. SpaceX continues here uh, on this Falcon 9 launch. I'll look in there inside of the control room, but I just am fascinated by that uh, as they wrap it up here on this Monday evening uh, as it was initially launched by this Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, so it was uh, taking place there in Cape Canaveral on Monday evening as the booster landed on a drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. All right, I'm Andy Mack here on Live Now from Fox. Just wanted to take you back out quickly to...